Cool, we're all set. Right on. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the weekly Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. It is a happy Tuesday in the month of June after an insanely successful summer code party weekend, and we've got lots of things on the agenda talking about what went down and what is still to happen. Let me draw everyone's attention to line 78 where we've got blog posts and press coverage and other things that we would invite you to read in an asynchronous fashion at your leisure. Moving to line 90, we are going to talk about the global weekend of code, what we learned, what went well, what could have gone better, and perhaps most importantly, what's next. So uh, Michelle Thorne, are you with us on today's call? Because we were going to invite you to sort of talk about your blog post and what all went down if you are in an environment that will allow you to speak to this wonderful <laughs> group of human beings. Uh, I hope this is an audible environment. You are audible, and I hear no background noise, sirens, or other construction effects. So it's tell us things, things we learned from pound right on. Tell us what we learned this weekend, sister. Um, yes, I, I mean I just threw together a first a first cut at some some things that came struck me, and I'm sure lots of folks have other things that came to mind. Um, and the the main top level highlights were um, that first it's like a, it was a huge team effort and, and lots of people pulling together um, different pieces, so it's like hard to even name name folks that made it happen, but. Um, I think so. From the perspective of uh, the weekend that I'm coming from, with talking with a lot of the hosts and stuff, I thought that um, although they weren't as well attended as hoped, that the host trainings actually were um, a really effective way to check in with at least a few hosts. Um, that we really got to have that like um, that audio connection with them and and feel like they're part of this larger whole. And um, I think if we do it next year or next time around, to maybe have um, Office hours where people just drop in and get ho and get help on maybe a dedicated channel during a, um, a set period of time rather than the perhaps overly scheduled way that that we did it this time around. Um, other things where I thought went well was this um, the visual hashtag. So um, Chris Appleton designed this really nice, you know, green circular circular summer code party hashtag, um, and we just it was very cool when you're flipping through the photos from. Um, you know, events around the world that you see this this little visual hashtag everywhere. Um, I think especially in um, the Philippines, they have a nice example of everybody at their party holding up the um, holding up the stick, and you could just see it in the background. And you know, in Romania, they hacked it, and so it was like the countdown for their hack jam. Um, and you, it was just like a nice unifying element. Um, and I guess last two or three things that. Then that I saw coming out of it was one really cool idea from um, Briggs, who's a Mozilla rep in Nigeria. So we didn't have a symbol gallery at the um, during the weekend of the kickoff weekend, um, but he had a great idea to actually create a symbol project that was a gallery. So he just made a fresh project and then dropped in the links and some images of what people were making at his event. Um, which I thought was just like a, a so simple but very clever um, way to get that gallery function. And um, yeah, lastly, I think um, we had a lot of people thinking about um, online support. Um, we had um, a really, really good volunteer manual prepared by Ben Simon, Matt Thompson, and Rebecca Mullen, um, and that just really I think helped clarify what people can be doing on different channels and how you can get involved. Um, we used the Moz Help um, hashtag, I, I think, pretty effectively. That it wasn't. Um, I think people knew that they could use that, and we got a few good requests coming in. And of course, Brian Brennan in the last, you know, overnight whips up this uh, solution that we had been dreaming of, which is basically a fork of the Army of Awesome that lets all the um, tweets that come in with the right hashtags lets us check them out, answer them, and then put in the um, cleared queue. So like a big thanks to everybody who participated in the support channels. And I'm also um, really keen to hear people's feedback about what we could do better next time around. So yeah, some, some first thoughts. Thank you, Michelle. Very excellent report back. And I draw folks' attention to those key stats and all of the uh, points that are being captured in the 90s and the low 100 lines in the Etherpad. Um, 
So I think what we'd love to do now is to uh, you know, move to the, to the what went well and invite people to weigh in. And so because we're on a conference line with several dozen people, um, what we'll invite people to do is if you can in the chat just say, hey, I've got a point, and that way we can actually call on you. But until such point as someone is talking, the line is open. Who would like to share an aha or something that went well? Star 7 to unmute, and please remember to remute when you are done. Is star 6 remute, Matt, or is it star 7 to remute? Uh, star 6 to mute, star 7 to unmute. Cool. So if you've got something to share, please star 7 yourself. If you want to be done sharing, please star 6 yourself so we don't have to star 6 everybody. All right. So let me just hit the highlights starting at line 117. So Brian's amazing SCP tool was the bomb. I think that people's jaws dropped. I really appreciated Dan's uh, comment on the email thread about the G shucks nature of such an amazing thing. Um, yeah, I thought the event hosts were incredibly well prepared, and it was really fun to watch how that went down. Uh, the testimonials were fun to see. Congrats to the Thimble team because the whole damn thing worked, and boy, let's not take that for granted. Uh, and the, the back channel staff were just amazing. I was very impressed with the ability to always see stuff moving through the air support tool just really quickly, especially Carla Casilli. You were putting some support tickets away like a machine, sister. And uh, yeah, lots of good memes spreading, and it was really cool to see all the focus pay off in such a collaborative, celebratory, rambunctious fashion. But that said, who might want to share anything else about a, a, an aha or anything you thought went really well, a specific story like Michelle did? Um, Chloe says that Carla is a tweet machine. Lord, don't we know it. But uh, anybody want to share a what went well or an aha of positivity? Hey, this is Matt. One of the things that I thought was really cool about the Toronto event in particular was like the mix of web making plus um, like physical hacking. Um, like it just seemed like part of what was really cool about the energy of the event was that there was like you know kids making robot invasion videos like right next to big buckets of Lego, right next to like a soldering station, right next to like a big like pile of toys for for, for people to hack as well. So. Just that mix of like digital plus physical felt really cool. Very nice. Um, on line 130, we've got the uh, I Love Clint Lalonde's icebreaker with the Mozilla graphic on the jigsaw. Does somebody want to say a little bit more about that? Is that a Belshaw color of purple, or is that someone else's color of purple? There's the link. Cool. All right. Any other thoughts on what went well before we talk about getting to betterness? Right on. Well, in the spirit of ongoing learning and ongoing improvement, line 133, things that could have gone better, the points that are already there. Um, so uh, you know, event attendance, I think there was some unevenness there, though I think overall it was really, really good. Um, I do agree with the notion that we do, did need to do a better job of articulating what next or how to stay involved or how to move people up the ladder. We certainly heard tell of people that thought this was just a two-day thing and that if they didn't host a code party, they had missed that bus. And so we should definitely keep messaging that, oh no, code parties go on forever, um, or at least until September 23rd. And then, um, yeah, no easy ways to see success. And so there were things coming out. There was stuff being published, but there was not really a, shall we say, a heat map or a real dashboard. And so I definitely think we want to do a better job in the future of storytelling. Um, metrics, yes, uh, definitely an area for improvement. Get some better metrics on board. Although I was really enjoying the metrics thread on one, I forget where, where that metrics thread was happening, but the numbers going around were pretty impressive. Over 1,000 people had participated at all the events this weekend, which is a really that number. Um, cool. Um, the features that got cut and lots of last minute changes and communications failures between teams. And I think that speaks to the fact that the foundation really is just now growing up as a software development organization. And I just can't say enough credit and props and gratitude to the entire MoFo Dev universe. You know, just amazing work done by everybody over there at MoFo Dev. Uh, thank you to all of you. Um, yeah, and then uh, Hackasaurus disabling a publishing mode. Damn it, what is up with security? Um, 
more community participation, better ratio between Mozilla and the community on support and storytelling. And I think that's definitely an iterative challenge that we should continue to focus on. <coughs> Working with the Air Mozilla team, and absolutely. Target age range. Um, yeah, interesting question. What is the age range that we are looking for? But yeah, really, really, really good stuff. Other thoughts on what could have done better? Anybody want to get on the audio channel and share a story, an anecdote? A lesson learned, and I wish we had. Hey there, this is Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. Hi. Um, I'll just uh, clarify what I meant by um, uh, event attendance, support, and promotion. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly, mostly because I spent a lot of time in Facebook and places like that. Um, I, f I felt uh, we definitely want to have more of a global view of our events next time. I know this was something that we just couldn't pull off in time. Um, but I really think it's going to be important next time because right now our event system assumes that people are already hoping to attend an event and that they're going to look within their neighborhood. Um, but I found that if we put things on a global map such as that Google map, um, a lot of people uh, had that sort of peer pressure moment where they're like, oh, well, other people are doing it. Um, and sometimes people sort of need to, to be sort of uh, look around them and see how much activity is happening before they're really willing to engage with it because some people approach this whole code idea a little differently. Absolutely. That's all I really meant by that. Super helpful. Thank you. Other comments? The audio channel is open. Uh, this is Brian. HTTPS is hard. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth? And, and wasn't it painful to really have the big ahas really close to launch day? So yeah, props to the team for figuring out sort of best possible solutions in that last seven days. So real, real appreciations there. And I would explicitly shout out deep appreciation to David Asher because I think David, having you share the Meta Mozilla software dev wisdom. Um, I can't tell you how grounding that was and just how amazing it was to really uh, have your solidarity and wisdom just guiding the ship on so many fronts. So big props to you for sending out the visualization exercises about how people should conceptualize the weekend and the launch and oh, those things they call haters. But yeah, major props. So happy to have you in this circle making us better. So Gunnar, two things I, if Mark here might throw in as uh, that I typed in there. Uh, uh -huh. you know, one is you know, to, to plus one the metrics piece. Um, and really I think what we need to do quite soon, and, and I'll take some responsibility with others to do this, is really clarify the concrete measurable goals that we have. And uh, we said at the beginning of this, but I don't think we've reminded ourselves that we had a 10K target in terms of participants between now and September 23rd. So uh -huh. uh, one thing is to just remind ourselves of that. And that's still achievable. Um, I actually I think that gives us some perspective on the thousand. The thousand to me isn't low, uh, but it is um, you know it is a, a reminder that we still got a lot of work to do in terms of hitting the kind of goal that we've we've got. So that that's the one thing I would throw there. And the other thing I would just put on all of us, and I'm trying to do some stuff on this front myself, is I think we were quite weak in the building the one-on-one -on -one personal relationships with the instructors who we, who we reached out to. We really haven't got a lot of them showing up on these calls. We often don't even kind of know who they are other than a name in a database. And I think especially for those people who are doing bigger events, uh, it's incumbent on all of us to kind of reach out to them, say hi on Facebook, try to invite them into these channels. Uh, and really make them feel at home. And I think we can all uh, work harder on that front. Great points. Uh, Mark, one process issue. Did you actually use the word metricizable in earnest? Yep, twice. Wow. <laughs> Some would call that a yellow cardable offense, but we will move on. Cool. Thank you. Great points. Anybody else have anything they want to add on the what could have gone better, what did we learn, existential reflections, ideas for next time around? Am I unmuted? You are unmuted, Brett, you beautiful audio discernible human being. <laughs> <laughs> um, I learned um, that kids um, have internalized a whole bunch of things 
that we had hoped that they would about um, how to use computer interfaces. And I learned that they had not internalized a whole bunch of things about the web that we had hoped. Um, it was really interesting to see them using Popcorn Maker because We've been so worried about whether or not certain aspects of the interface are um, intuitive, and it's certainly the case that we have more to do there. But where I saw them falling down were, was really interesting. It was mostly around we would ask them to cut and paste or move between tabs or um, sort of find something out on the web and then copy that link and paste it back in. And it was really interesting to see how much of that um, was outside of their comfort zone. And it was really, um, it, it sounds weird to say this, but I actually found that inspiring in a way because I, I know that that's something that the learning team has talked about. Um, but I'm really kind of um, excited to see what we could do to teach that because I think that that teaching could be fun and a lot more open-ended and um, enjoyable. So it was, that was just really wild to see. Awesome. That's a phenomenal point, and it definitely is consistent with some of the stuff I saw, so right on. And Doug Belshaw makes an interesting point in the chat that uh, the kind of environment we deal with, Etherpad plus a conference call is great, but potentially off-putting for some. Uh, I think that's more about today's call, but I think it's a very important point that we've come to, we've come to feel some norms around some rather wacky tools that have 47 different colors on the screen. So definitely always a good thing to step outside, as Brett's just saying, and sort of take a look at how folks are actually perceiving this reality and what skills they're bringing. Excellent. Any other thoughts? Um, hey, Gunnar. It's Carla. I, I just want to say um, big props for the simple MDN. I think that is a huge and wonderful undertaking, and it will help everybody ultimately. And if you can jump in there and share your thoughts, um, that's one of those things, I think, for people who are brand new to HTML and CSS. Um, so that's on line 115. If, if people can jump in there and, and help that out. I think that's one of those things that really explains a lot of things if you're trying to do something on your own and you don't necessarily have someone to work with. So rock on. Right, Carla, great could you, point. Could you say what the, sorry, could you say what the simple MDN is? Sure. So essentially, um, uh, the MDN is the Mozilla Developer Network, and it's essentially a very large definition of terms, and it's written in pretty heavy uh, developer ease. And so what we're trying to do is go through and simplify it so that when you're, you're just new to a concept, like if you don't know what the A tag will do, it will tell you um, that it connects to links. It's the thing that creates links. Um, so we're trying to very much simplify it. As people are starting to learn things, they can immediately feel comfortable with the new language that they're learning because they were they are actually learning a new language. Cool, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Right on. And Brett wants us to know that he has one more point. Oh, Brett, bring it. Um, one of the things that I saw um, c come through our station um, were shy kids, and I have. I don't know if I have a, um, a solution to this, but I think that our events really um, in many ways uh, are extroverted events. And I'm, I, I saw a couple of kids that, that, that tentatively came by and, and wanted to play with our stuff and were bright. Um, but then uh, they, they wanted to go into the corner and be by themselves with their computer. And I think that that's okay. Um, and I, it's just something to think about for us, I think, because we do have, um, you know, part of um, less yak and more hack is the demo at the end of the day and, and the, the, the pride in what you've done. And all that stuff is really important and um, valuable skills for young people to learn. Um, but I'm not sure that we have, <clears throat> I'm not sure we're catering to the shy kids um, as well as we could. And I, I'd love to see us think about that. and. Um, and, and cater to them. <coughs> great point. Emma is saying that uh, they had a similar experience. So right on. Great, great point. Any other thoughts on places we could do better before we talk about what's next? This is like ludicrously fat feedback. So thank you to everybody. Hey, this is Matt. Um, I guess just one last thing is um, I feel like we um, always struggle like at. Um, Mozilla Festival, or now again at Summer Code Party, to really like with the storytelling piece and really like 
um, just getting a grasp on like what's happening. And we know that um, like what's actually getting surfaced through like hash mods party is like um, kind of like a small portion of the overall picture. So um, I guess that's something that you know I, I feel like um, could maybe do better on as well, and maybe try to Im embed like more of the storytelling piece in the um, like training and like kind of bake it right into the template of creating your event, like kind of setting uh -huh. expectations and providing help for um, how you can report out to the world all the awesome stuff that's happening at your, your event. <clears throat> Great point. Right on. Michelle Thorne, you mashup expert, the idea of running an open news challenge on storytelling at live events. What is up with that? And by the way, I didn't want to let Carla's comment go. Carla, if you come up with a metricizing exercise video, I can't wait to see how that helps to support Mozilla's <laughs> annual revenues. All right. So let us move forward to the what's next. Dr. Mark Sermon coming to us live from Toronto in the country of Canada. What lies ahead on this journey of summer code partying? So much more partying ahead uh, with 9,000 more people. Um, so you know, there's two pieces to this. One is uh, there is uh, just the continued code partying that is happening. And there's a great uh, etherpad in there, and there may be other people who want to speak about some specific events. Uh, but you know, through the week and through the summer, there's still another 350 or so events uh, scheduled, but more importantly, I think as we make noise about these events uh, and make it clear to people that this is a summer long thing, that number of events can continue and, and hopefully will continue to grow. Uh, so I actually don't think that's that much of a reach, although we will have to push ourselves uh, to, to grow this. But the idea is to follow through throughout the summer, uh, and hopefully there are lots of places where there are lots of rainy days where uh, going inside and coding is uh, entertainment. So that, that's the, the piece that I think we'll continue to hear about on these calls and continue to work on, and you'll continue to hear from Michelle and Ben and Matt and Aaron. The piece I wanted to just uh, talk about is sort of how we process a bunch of what we just talked about a lot above in terms of what went well and what didn't. And so just so people know, there's a slate of postmortems and a slate of road mapping activities um, in the um, in the offing, uh, there'll be postmortems on the weekend of code, which will be um, on the on the summer code party calls, uh, as well as symbol and software team in general over the course of the next week. So if you feel strongly you want to be in those postmortems, I can actually put names beside them. Uh, reach out to the project lead. So reach out to Michelle uh, if you want to talk about be a part of the symbol postmortem. Uh, and so on. Uh, I'll put names there in a second. And then equally, um, equally important, there's going to be some road mapping work around, um, around the key pieces that we launched, both in terms of what we want to get done through Q3, uh, as well as some longer term thinking. Um, and the people who are owners for those pieces will uh, reach out to people who they want to kind of pull into the first round of road mapping. But if you feel you've got stuff you want to add uh, or really want to be involved in that road mapping and have got ideas to, to kind of push in in the first place, reach out to those people who are listed there right now. Um, and we will be back on this call in the coming weeks as well as out there on the web uh, with straw man next step roadmaps on all of this stuff. Uh, and then the last piece is uh, I think what we all need to, to be doing, and certainly a bunch of us have already sort of put some of the time in our calendars for this, is just sort of uh, thinking out loud around what's next or what we learned. And so this is a great time over the next couple of weeks if you've got a few spare cycles to reflect on what's happened in a blog posting uh, and get it out there to the world. And some of the things that people are working on there are there starting on line 206. So that's a, an overview of some stuff that's happening. Uh, I don't know, Gunnar, if you want to pull out some questions for that, but it's just to say there is stuff flowing from the feedback above and more. Right on. Yes, I'm just trying to parse and sort of see. Um, yeah, I think the, the most effective thing is probably just to open up the floor. As Mark was speaking and people were adding stuff above, do people want to shout out some of the stuff they added or ask questions or 
additions to Mark's What Lies Ahead. And I'll be watching the uh, chat channel if people want to reserve bandwidth for sharing a point. But who, who's got thoughts, additional ahas or reactions to the What Lies Ahead thoughts? And Carla, plus one to your figuring out how to do these outdoors. Who was going to speak? Uh, I was just going to um, mention it seems like what started in line 178 is in terms of helping us get to that partying with 9,000 more people target, like thinking about um, partners that can bring in like a large number of, of participants to help us get there. So um, I, I guess I just want to highlight that that's a thread that, that, that started in, in this call and people are starting to brainstorm ideas there. Right on. Cole points out that the Mozilla London office is buzzing with 40 hackers. Cole, can we count them as web makers? He says yes. Excellent. Yes, campus party, another excellent suggestion. Right on. Brett, your math skills are incredible. Brett points out that if we count the 40 in London, we only have 8,960. <laughs> Brett, you're in charge. All right. Let's point forward. Bless his numerical skills. All right. Uh, any other thoughts? Audio is great. Don't be shy. Uh, we do want giant events. Uh, Mark, question for you, financial question. Do we have budget to rent out venues like the O2 Arena or Madison Square Garden? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. And then, yeah, bring your own laptop and done. Although I wouldn't want to see what the power strip budget was for an event like that. Other comments, questions, feedbacks, ahas. But I think, yeah, the ideas in line 178 and following are fantastic for scaling up the party. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Let me invite folks to take a look at um, line 209 for blog postings of many varieties, uh, lots of reflections and thoughts. Um, I'm going to turn our attention to line 221. How do we do a better job of surfacing success and the global summer code party community? Matt, do you want to say anything about that before we move on down to the next agenda item? I don't think so. I think it's included in the list that Mark started, like. Um, road mapping discussions for you know, Thimble, Popcorn, et cetera, et cetera, included webmaker.org on that list. And so um, I think we'll try to, try to tackle that there. There's a, there's a ticket in line 209 that Ben Simon is facing in that's already trying to um, take on some of that work. But um, yeah, I think the webmaker.org team can kind of volunteer to take that on and uh, report back uh, next week. Very nice. And I would draw people's attention to the Google Map link on line 238. That is definitely a fun visual if you load that up. Uh, and it is data rich, so it will take a second to load. But it is definitely worth a click. Um, and Matt, anything else we want to say about the Summer Code Party Google Map? Other than, is this something Rebecca put together? Yeah, this is, this is something Rebecca put together. Um, and uh, one of the things that um, Rebecca and I have been chatting about is adding uh, photos to this map. Um, so right now, because this isn't drawing live, live data, it's, it's hacked together. Um, we've been kind of actually discussing in the pad. You'll see there were, I think we think this is primarily a storytelling tool um, as opposed to like a find an event tool, although you know, it does a little of that as well. So, it, so what we're exploring next is adding uh, photos to this map so you can kind of click around the world and see some of the great photos we collected this weekend, um, geotagged, and feel like you're kind of getting a glimpse of the global party. Nice. Major props to Rebecca for putting that together. That is, to me, a very important asset that we want to be maintaining. And, and really, that, that tells the story in a poof kind of way. So mm -hmm. nicely done. All right. Let us move to line 256 in the Etherpad. Summer Code Party events this week. I'll just point out a few. Wow, the buzzwords just keep on coming when you put Hive New York City with Tumblr and Summer Code Party in one line. 260. Everybody should check out that party this coming weekend. Alina cannot be with us right now because she is rocking a Barcelona learning code party as we speak. Webmakers 101 is happening in Athens uh, June 28th, and you see the link there. 
And uh, we've got uh, the SCP Week in Events link on line 267. So let me draw your, your attention there. But please make sure as things transpire in the realm of summer code partying that it gets surfaced, it gets recorded. Redundancy is not a bad thing. If your, exist, if your event exists and doesn't make a noise, well, there is an existential crisis. So I think that is all there is to say about Summer Code Party, but I am going to dramatically pause and see if anyone has any Summer Code Party ads before we go on. Any ahas, any appreciations, any existential reflections about our amazing, successful Summer Code Party weekend. The floor is open. Excellent. Well, I will just summarize by saying I am blown away. I, just, I think it was really an astounding accomplishment, and I am super proud to be part of this amazing posse of people teaching people how to code and how to make on the web. Hey, Line 275, Cucumber team, welcome to the WebMaker call. Thank you for being a guest. We would love to know what is Cucumber in your context, and what can you tell us about your great project? Star 7 to unmute thyself. Hey guys, good morning. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So, uh, uh, so a brief introduction. We are uh, four students at the Center of Digital Media in Vancouver. And uh, we've been uh, working for a couple of weeks now with the Vancouver office on an initiative that uh, aims to turn people into web makers. So uh, we put uh, a link to our blog, which uh, outlined what we've done so far, and uh, also a link of our website, which is the first iteration of uh, what we've done. And uh, so basically the idea, the idea is very simple. Um, uh, we are working on packaging, easy packaging for people to tell stories with their smartphones. So the idea is that uh, people should be able to tell like anything about a place, either with a picture, a video, sound, a music, and, um, and so with the smartphone they can tell what they like, what they don't like about a place. And uh, as you can see with the link, like uh, below the Cucumber link, I'm sorry, uh, uh, we're going to put it on the screen. Yeah, can you, uh, can you see uh, the website on the screen appearing? No, not yet. <coughs> can you hit Share Desktop? Yep, absolutely. Yep, that's working. Here you come. Okay. Uh, so that's the first iteration. Oh. So you guys are dialed in on Skype. I think what's probably happening is the screen sharing is crushing your um, yeah. your bandwidth. No, but so, that's that's, um, that's okay. Basically, like uh, it's very simple. Like uh, the first one is uh, is about Vancouver, and uh, it's a bunch of video that uh, that. Sure. I, so think yeah. I think we should. I think we should. You guys are breaking up pretty badly. I think that so, uh, let's let's disable screen sharing for you, and I can just um, pull it up on my side. Okay. One second. Um, Cool. Uh, one sec. So I, I'm sharing now. Do you want me to just click on one of these videos? No, no, it's okay because... Uh, uh ...read right off. So page that uh, drew a picture of Vancouver, and uh, this is the first iteration. Of we want to do it about, like, other places, and we want to do it about, uh, especially we want to, that's the first format, the first package. Uh, we call it a recipe. And uh, basically, that's the most simple one we could think of, so just a video. But uh, we, want to, we want to make more packages, so with pictures, sound, that, uh, that would enable people to reach about places. Like those <laughs> old okay, so uh, the website works. If you click on hey guys, your story. Your your audio is, is, is really poor. It's breaking up pretty badly. Um, I don't know if you have the, do you have the ability to, to dial back in on a landline and, and we'll come back to you? 
Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. we'll uh, dive back in on Ryan's line. Okay. Um, why don't we, Gunnar, should we just press ahead and then, and then circle back so that the Cucumber team can finish up? Yes, that sounds like a fine, fine plan. Um, Matt, why don't we jump ahead to the Monday Mozilla All Hands meeting? Uh, sure, cool. So um, Mark did uh, a really excellent job in yesterday's All Hands meeting of kind of summarizing what happened uh, over the weekend with Summer Code Party, including some lessons learned um, drawing from Michelle Thorne's post. Um, so in ne next week's All Hands meeting, we are going to have a new video in our Meet the Webmakers series. The uh, youth-focused um, video should be done this week. So we'll have that to present. And I think what we want to do is kind of connect that to the larger Summer Code Party story and how we're like reaching out to youth through Webmaker and through Summer Code Party. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any any other additions, stuff that they want to put on the kind of Mozilla All Hands radar, radar for next week. But uh, that's what we're thinking so far. If you have anything to add, Excellent. you can add it under line 304. Awesome. Thank you very much, Matt. Hey, do we have the Cucumber team back yet? All right. They are probably still out in the da -dum -dum -tch vegetable garden. All right. There is a YouTube link that Brett has provided in the chat window. Uh, so for those that are looking for distraction while we play the Jeopardy music, feel free to click on the YouTube link to the right. Uh, Matt, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we basically are at the end of our agenda except for the Cucumber folks. Is that a true story? That's a true yeah, story. Yeah, uh, oh. oh, Cucumber, are you back? Yeah, exactly. Well, welcome back. We'll go right ahead. Thank you for your patience with our infrastructure. Uh, tell us, tell us what you should still tell us. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, um, the way um, our first website works is that um, we thought we want to make it really easy for people to tell stories um, in a web-making kind of way. So, when you click on our website, when you click on tell your story, you are able to fill out a really easy form, upload a link to a um, YouTube or Vimeo video, and with popcorn, with the help of popcorn. This is generated into a nice looking um, video about this place. And that's the idea and we want to, um, uh, we want to provide more templates um, and um, more ways that people can easily tell stories and later customize their stories. So basically it's a really simple first step into something like Popcorn Maker, which and the, our approach is that it always looks really great at the end if you do nothing, but that you can in the end customize everything so that it looks like you would like to look. Yeah. So now if you fill out the form like I... So yeah, click again on tell your story. Okay, and now you can fill out the form. So that's basically a form, I love or hate something somewhere because of something. And then you can upload a video, and this will generate a video out of, out of the page. And if you don't fill out the form, it won't submit. That's why it's false. <laughs> sir, I'm sorry, where, where, should I, where should I click? Just click on love, for example. On love now. Love. I love. So this is switching the love to hate. And if you oh. click again, it's love. And then something, then you can fill out, I don't know, I love Mozilla. <laughs> Perfect. And you have to fill out everything. And yeah, I mean the UX is obviously not perfect now, but it's the first iteration of it. And now you would need to upload a um, YouTube URL or Vimeo URL that it works, and then it would show up in the in the final picture. So that's basically a three-day prototype. And we are iterating on those um, templates during the next day. And that's it. That's great. Thank you so much. Are there comments or questions about this? Carla's digging what you're doing. Thank you.
Right on. Any other questions from folks? Excellent. Well, Cucumber folks, <clears throat> what can we do to spread the word or how can we be allies in your excellent project? What, uh, what might you invite this group of folks on this call to do to help you move this great project forward? Um, so uh, we have this blog and sometimes we, we post some questionnaires or screenshots or whatever to get some feedback um, from our blog readers. So far it's good because our blog is on our um, school website as well, so we always get feedback from, from our um, classmates. Yeah, but um, that's the only thing that once in a while we post something with questions, so um, um, maybe we um, we will post the link to our blog once we post a new blog post, and then um, whoever wants to contribute can, can help us and um, look at the blog once in a while. Sounds great. The link of the and, and this is Brett, Brett guys. Um, we had a meeting in Vancouver around this, and at the time you guys were considering um, creating a popcorn maker template to, to generate the results from your that sort of Mad Lib page. Did, is, did you end up using popcorn to create this? Uh, yep. It's all, it's all popcorn. So in the back end, it's all, um, the JavaScript works all with popcorn. So the idea is that we um, that the front end is not is not really popcorn maker yet, but um, that the in the end the, the front end could be a popcorn maker template because in the back end it's all using popcorn. So the customization then should work um, should work in popcorn. However, first we are really worried about the the outcome first, and then we yep. we tie it into the popcorn maker template thing. So it's very cool. So like what you want to create eventually is that somebody can say, um, I love sunsets in Vancouver because they make me feel happy. And then everyone would, and then your, your um, software would create a, a unique storytelling video about that place and about what that user loves. That's right. Exactly. Correct? Yep. Yeah. And then this cool. well, is in and, and uh, we'll make it later. And so do, was there anything about, um, could we help you more in terms of how did you find the documentation? And I know that you know, we, aside from that first meeting we have, we, we haven't heard from you guys that much. So were you able to, to build what you needed based on our documentation and, and the library currently? Or we can take this offline, but we're all curious to know how we can make this easier for you. Um, yeah, there are some, um, some questions around how to use sound uh, with popcorn, so um, external sound files. Yeah, but this is something I guess we should talk about um, offline. And well, well, we... Yeah. Great. But for now, I think it's, uh, it's working really, uh, really fine. And this prototype is, was, was a really quick one, so um, yeah. And we didn't run into big problems yet. Great to hear. Well, nice, nice work so far. Perfect, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Very, very impressive. All right, friends. Anybody else have any business they would like to surface on this call this week? Otherwise, as sad as I am to say it, I think this weekly webmaker community call has run its course. There is good mirth going on in the IM chat channel, so I draw your attention to woohoos and whoops going down. But uh, Thank you, everybody, for being on the call this week. We will look forward to seeing you. Same time, same channel for next week's Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. Have a great week, and again, congratulations to everyone who made Summer Code Party a success. Bye now. Thanks, Gunnar. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Please stand by.